But that's what it takes. In a, in a declining, in a de declining America, in a deindustrialized America, those who have education and imagination and the hookup or whatever, that's how you make it. So I make a bunch of excuses for my lack of monetary success like Alderman. Let me show you. I don't have time to put Alderman Brooker's picture. Maybe if I find a picture, I might put it up there. But I, I don't, I don't uh, begrudge anybody who's successful. But I, every success has a backstory. So when I meet a, a parent or, or a teenager in a school and they got a 30 or 25 on the ACT and they get straight A's, that's a backstory. They don't come out, out of the ethers or through some osmosis process get high grades and be high achievers. So people who are high achievers, there's a backstory to how they got to be high achievers. Uh, when you, I don't have the audio book or the book with me in front of me, but uh, Outliers, maybe I should bring up the picture of Outliers. Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, man, it's phenomenal. He says, I can't, I'm taking it out of context, but he says success is a gift. Success is a gift. And people, the outliers, the people who were phenomenally successful, they, they, they evidently had, as he says, has to, had the presence of mind to seize the opportunity and go on to great sex. 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 You see what's on my mind. Success. <laughs> Maybe I want the other one too. And go on to great success. Okay, the, a linchpin. So I, I, you know, I, I, was tell, I sent an email to Seth Golden. Seth Golden, the uh, the uh, great uh, marketer, and uh, wrote a ton of books. And uh, you know, he's just almost like a sage now. And so, and I said, you know, it's people like me, who, whether you, it could be, I'm in my late forties. You could be in your late teens, or your late twenties, your late thirties, your late sixties, or your late fifties. Is there's a lot of us who. Basically, full of excuses, lazy, lackluster, and up, and we they almost given up. We given up a few times. In fact, we given up just before we just met a great success, or we sabotage our success. I talked too long, but let me just go with this, since I don't have any guests tonight. I'll run some video if I have if I don't run talk my uh, talk too much tonight. So we're full of excuses. So I was I asked Seth Golden. I sent him an email, and I sent to see an email to. Uh, to uh, 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 Malcolm Gladwell, his people contacted me one time. That's a long. I'll tell that story some other time. So I said, it's people like me who have just been. I, I got the email. I got. I got this. I don't have it in front of me, but I have the. If you send me an email, I will send you the blog. Go to Mark Sim Chicago. It's a blog. Mark Sim Chicago. You may see the. the I do these one one sentence blogs. I know people are not going to read the whole paragraph or a whole a treatise, so I just go one line. I'm done with my little blog, okay? And if I have a, a one sentence musing, boom, it's out there. And I said, people like me have given up. We have our limiting beliefs, our failures, our foibles, our fears have stopped us. And we say, I can't. I'm not good enough. I'm too old. They're too smart. They have the connections. They have the money. They have, they're lucky. They're better prepared. I, I'm just not going to achieve some great success. I just have to be happy with just my little simple working class life. Which most Americans are going to have. Most Americans will never make under, over 50000 Most Americans will never make under 50000 Unless you know, inflation goes up and we're not. If you could adjust it for inflation, but you know what I'm saying. But in, here in the declining United States of America, if we, don't, if we lose that hope that we could hit the home run, we could win the lottery, we could come up with a great idea, a great invention, a new song, a, a, a play, a book, a, some, a, some artistic adventure that would make, would make us, you know, of course we want the adulation of you know, great success and we want to be noted and, and lauded and applauded, we know that. A lot of it's a lot of our a lot of that desire is ego based. I understand this. A lot of desire for great success is ego based. It really should be to to move humanity forward, to bring joy in people's lives. I understand that, but a lot of it is also uh, ego based motivation. I understand it. But whatever the motivation is, you if we lost that sense that I can hit the home run, I can double my income. I could become a millionaire. If we ever lose that here in the United States of America, it is over. We have, in spite of the recession, a lot of us have lost it, the hope for a better life. But most of us haven't. And if it ever got to a tipping point, 
that most the majority of us have lost that sense here in America that I, it's not going to get better. I cannot improve myself. My children won't have it. It's over for this country. Yeah, we'll survive and have food, clothing, and shelter. And, but this sense of a great nation, world superpower, it's kaputsville if we ever lose that sense that I can hit the home run. I can make it happen. So, you know, work on your dreams. That's what I'm trying to tell you. As I babble about mine, I mean, hopefully I'm inspiring you to go, go back to the drawing board and make it happen. I, I'm going to write this book. I've been writing this book. I've been thinking about writing this book for, for a long time. I've, I've wrote, I had my Woody Lynch book was very successful, successful, successful if you ask me. Woody Lynch, Why African Americans Have So Many Issues. It's on a blog now. I may throw it on an ebook form, ebook form, a form for free at some point if I ever get around to it. But I procrastinate. That's my problem. My procrastination is based off fears, just like you. You say, why should I, like, I'm going to write this book. I've been writing it for the past three years. And it's based, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's about, it's loosely about Barack Obama. It's a long story. And i got to write this book so I can time it with the 2012 election. So it may not come out this year. It could come out there later this year if I can get on it. It's, it's only going to be a couple hundred pages or whatever. If I could go on and knock it out. But I wanted to time it for the, for the election, for his re-election. So I can capitalize on Barack Obama's, uh, you know, if he wins, whether he wins or loses, you know, I want to capitalize on his uh, re-election process. Yes, yeah, so it's about marketing. But it's also, the book is also about inspiration, but I just said, it's about people like me who may have a lot of failures, who had opportunities like other day, I mean, yesterday. I wanted, I want to interview uh, uh, David Axelrod, don't ask me why. And I said, I want to call the office, blah, 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 blah. But the other day, something I, I listened to my sixth sense. I listened to my intuition for a change, and I said, and my brain said, "Get that business card, put the business card in your pocket, because you may see somebody." And sometimes you don't see nobody. But today, I, I, I ran into an Axelrod. You know, I'm a limo driver. I was hanging out downtown between customers. I'm a limo driver. That's what I said real quick. Limo driver, limousine driver. And so the point is. That you mean, when I say limousines, mostly it's a car. It's a car service, basically. Most people, I'm in a Lincoln. I'm in a town car. I'm sitting there chilling. I just had lunch, enjoying myself, listening to radio. And here's David Axelrod and his wife. Now, and, and ironically, I had my camera. The camera that I'm talking to right now, I had it, I had it uh, with me just in case I had to interview somebody or wanted some footage to put on the wall here, right? On the green screen. The green wall here. And so I saw him, it was with his wife, so I wasn't going to mess with him. If he was by himself, I probably would have jumped out the car and said, Hey, man, you know, loan me a dollar. You know, no, I would say that. But, <laughs> but I would have said, you know, Mr. Oxenrod, man, you're very successful. Could you give me a few minutes for my cable access show? And uh, maybe he said yes, who knows? You know, because these little, the citizen media that you don't take seriously, if he says the wrong thing or people can misconstrue what he says or twist what he says, a little simple interview with a little simple camcorder quarter can turn into an international, uh, you know, problem. <laughs> everybody has a camera now. You know you got one in your phone somewhere. It's everybody. You know, none of us can really hide because of these cameras are everywhere. And we got to watch what we say and who we hanging out with. So it was ironic. So I just gave him my card and I sent an email today to the office and whatnot. He may get it. Who knows? He may come on the show. Who knows? But I better do it before the election really jumps off next year in 2012. How did I get on that tangent? Okay. So the trick is about, is about opportunity. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Just preparing yourself for the opportunity making it happen. You know, it's nothing new under the sun. It's just how you package it. Your art. That's one of the things that the linchpin does. Uh, Mr. Seth Golden always talks about. Just, you know, get it out there. I forgot. He's, well, he's, it's not the word launch. What's the word he uses? Uh... It was send. Uh, I forgot. It was the word. I gotta read the book again. But then we listen to it rather. And so you know you gotta put it out there. Sometimes it's like I don't care if it's a blog, a little video like this, or your painting, you're laying beats. If you, if, especially if you're a young man, young woman, and you're a singer, the key is it's a numbers game. Like a salesperson, the more prospect you prospects you present your your uh, product or service to, the more likely you will get. The more sales you'll get. It's it's all a numbers game. So if you write a hundred songs. You have a better shot, or a thousand, you have a better shot of having that one. It only takes one, and you may only have one hit. So you write those hundred songs, you crank them out, you crank out the videos, you crank out your blog, you start, you know, like me, I should be, instead of doing this show, a goofing off the day, I just had lunch, I'm about to have some more lunch too. <laughs> In a few minutes. Uh, we should be working on our projects. 
We all have projects. Artistic, that's what you talk. Artistic. Our, 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 our art. Our art. We all have some artistic pro project that we need to work on. We don't want to take our, our greatness to the grave. We want to be able to leave it out there because some, some of our greatness will be out here long after we return back to the earth. You know? It's for our children and grandchildren for the succeeding generations. I think, I don't know, I have maybe had some closing thoughts at, at the end of the show or whatnot. So let me show you some videos and hopefully you enjoy the rest of the show.